And welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for the week of September 21, 2020. I'm Jason Parent with the Arusta County Action Program. On today's program, we'll take a look at some of the offerings that ACAP is currently um, extending to the community. We'll look at the operations and programs that the agency, some of which are new during COVID-19, and we'll revisit some of those programs and see how things are going with ACAP's Chief Operating Officer, Jamie Chandler. And beyond that, we'll talk with Sherry Locke about some of the community offerings that we're extending in partnership with other organizations to our community uh, during this time. And finally, we'll sit down and talk with uh, Blake Hatt from the Northern Lighthouse, one of ACAP's key community partners that we recently signed a new partnership agreement with about what's happening at Northern Lighthouse and what's happening with the Northern Lighthouse ACAP partnership. But before we get to all of that, uh, we have an abbreviated news segment because we'll be discussing a number of the topics uh, with Jamie, Sherry, and Blake in just a little bit. Um, but for now, we want to uh, bring you up to date with this week's news on ACAP today and we begin as we usually do by sharing with us with you I should say our status uh, we are still uh, closing our offices to the public with the exception of by appointment only uh, over the phone obviously we've been doing that since the pandemic first hit um, in mid-March and first impacted Arusta County we are also meeting regularly virtually uh, with our customers and offer curbside assistance here at 771 Main Street and at our office um, in Holton on Military Street. We do anticipate that by next week at this time, we'll have information for you on a change of status as the colder temperatures are settling into Aroostook County on how we will be able to serve you uh, both in a combination of in your vehicle um, and by accessing our buildings and going through the appropriate COVID protocols. But again, we'll have more on that for you in the coming week. We want to, in partnership with our healthcare providers throughout Aroostook County, want to really encourage you this season of all seasons to get your flu shot. And there are a number of free flu shot clinics that are being offered here in central Aroostook County. Our development and communications team has reached out to the Northern Maine Medical Center as well as Holton Regional Hospital and some of our other providers out in those regions about any flu shot clinics that will be happening there. As soon as we have that information, we will get it to you. But for now, what you're seeing on your screen are drive-through flu shot clinics that are being offered both through Northern Light Health AR Gould Hospital here in Presque Isle and through Cary Medical Center in Caribou um, and I should say that I mentioned Presque Isle and Caribou but as you can see there the flu shot clinics are being offered in Mars Hill, Caribou, Fort Fairfield, Van Buren, Washburn and, and Limestone so uh, please do check out this information on either of those websites and as soon as we have a comprehensive listing countywide we'll look forward to bringing that information to you, but please do consider if you haven't before, or if you have in the past, this is certainly the year uh, to get your flu shot. Um, speaking of uh, things that hopefully will help prevent a disease, uh, childhood immunization clinics are continuing to be offered by our partners at the Department of Health and Human Services. We understand that many folks fell behind on their immunizations uh, during COVID-19 when things were uh, closed in most cases or uh, medical facilities were not seeing non-COVID patients or families were not going to, to medical appointments to hope to avoid uh, any contraction of COVID. Please do consider um, getting your child's immunizations up to date. You can either contact your local pediatrician or again, the public health nursing component of the Department of Health and Human Services are hosting catch-up clinics. Please do reach out to them on the information on your screen. Uh, speaking of health insurance, uh, we're talking about all things health related in this edition of, of ACAP today. Our health insurance marketplace navigator is available for you. It won't be altogether too long before we're headed into the open enrollment season. However, if your job has been impacted in any way and that's impacted your health insurance, you can call Stan Targonski here at ACAP now and he's able to help you navigate through some of the particulars of the health insurance marketplace and what might be available for you and your best options are. So please do call us if you're in need of these services. Uh, and, and another health matters, we want to help you if you are using tobacco products and are interested in quitting, and we do encourage you to quit using tobacco products, but we understand that that's not easy. And so our um, tobacco cessation expert, Elaine Sipe, um, is available for you. The number and email for her are there on your screen. Uh, she can meet with you remotely. She can meet with you um, at a neutral site uh, with health protocols in place, um, but she's available to you uh, remotely as well. So please do consider consider um, contacting us if you are in need of assistance to quit tobacco products, especially smoking. Uh, we want to help you uh, be as healthy as you can uh, in this particular period of time. 
Um, and uh, we also want to let you know in non-health related news, we talked with our workforce development team a little while ago. Uh, they currently have openings in the Adult uh, Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act or Workforce Development Programming, as well as youth. Youth are ages 16 through 24 and adults, we can work with adults in any uh, in any age category. Uh, we have help through job searches, uh, through tutoring, um, and any kind of help to get you into uh, more full or new employment. Um, we certainly encourage you to contact us. There's on-the-job trainings available, um, and there's also assistance for things like childcare and for uniforms, if that's the case, if you're going into a profession where those are required. There's also a program that we talked about. If you recall, last week we talked about the National emergency grant uh, for individuals impacted by the opioid epidemic. These are for careers. If you're interested in going into a career uh, to help individuals impacted by the opioid epidemic, uh, there are options through that national emergency grant for us to be able to help you. Also, if you are in recovery, uh, there's an opportunity for us to help you with your job placement and looking for a job um, and training for a new profession uh, as a person in recovery. So please do reach out to us at 764-3721 if we can be of assistance in any of those regards uh, for you. And finally, uh, in our news that you can use segment, we want to remind you that uh, ACAP is encouraging all folks to mask up for the health of yourself and for the health of others in our community and are encouraging you to do that in public um, at all times. If you're visiting an ACAP facility, you will notice that our staff are wearing masks in all of the common areas uh, where they're not in their individual workspace. And we are also encouraging our staff to do so when they're out in the community and ask that you do the same to help keep our community healthy. And with that, we're going to transition now because a number of the pieces of information that we want to discuss uh, with you. Uh, Jamie Chandler, our Chief Operating Officer um, who oversees programs here at the agency, joins us uh, as a obviously a repeat guest on ACAP today. Welcome back to the program, Jamie. Thanks, Jason. Happy to be here. So Jamie, we have been working on a number of things, both COVID and non-COVID related um, and making adjustments uh, for COVID. And one of the first things that I think we recognized and you did a great work along with Heidi Ratcliffe and others in the agency is that many of the individuals who are turning to us right now don't know uh, where to begin, how to begin that process. So we instituted something you call the Navigator Program. So tell, tell folks a little bit about how that's going and what it's all about if, if they're not familiar with it. Sure. So early on, um, as we were responding to the COVID pandemic, we quickly came to realize that a number of the individuals who were calling ACAP in search of services had never utilized our services before. And so we quickly decided um, that we needed to sort of make a change to the way that we're delivering services to make sure that we're getting people connected to all of the services that they may be eligible for. And so our ACAP Navigator program does just that. And so our navigators collect uh, basic demographic information on the individuals that are calling um, for a specific service. And they are not only helping get them connected to the service for which they call, but they are also looking at what other services may this family or individual be eligible for and getting them connected to the proper program staff in order to um, ensure that they're accessing all of the programs that they um, could be utilizing. Now, Jamie, this service is, um, is, is proving to be very valuable and important because as you noticed, as you noted in your statement, there are a lot of folks that, um, that haven't had to turn to the agency for help before because they've never been. We were, we were in unprecedented times um, and uh, traditional, um, even traditional labor sectors that are not usually impacted by a, a more modest downturn in the economy are being impacted. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was that was certainly um, an experience that that we have learned through the process, and so um, you know the the navigator program really does help in making sure that um, we are we are educating people and helping them to understand the the many programs that are out there that they may be eligible for. 
So next week we hit the uh, first anniversary of another critical service that ACAP put up a year ago uh, called the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center, which was uh, directed toward uh, individuals who were experiencing homelessness or who were housing insecure. We've seen some changes in how we've delivered that service, especially since uh, mid-March, um, but talk about where we're at with that service and uh, how it's still helping individuals even in this, in this challenging time. Absolutely. So uh, one of the, the things that we needed to do as an agency was to figure out how we were going to be delivering services, um, given the uh, restrictions that are being put on um, us as far as how many individuals and guests can be in our buildings and, and um, how can we best provide supports to, to individuals under those restrictions. And so um, one of the ways that, that we were able to do that is we were able to um, move our Hope and Prosperity Resource Center to its own location. And so we're currently located at 975 Skyway Drive in Presque Isle. It's otherwise known, uh, many of you may, may know it as the building that FedEx is located in. And we, we are actually located in um, the second doorway uh, in, in uh, just behind FedEx there. So um, we are we have we have three staff that are working uh, to provide coaching services. The same services that were available at our 771 Main Street location are available at our new location at 975. We have workstations available for uh, anyone who may need access to a computer or the internet in order to complete job applications or fill out um, other other types of forms, work on schoolwork. Uh, we, we've had a, a few individuals that are participating in uh, online learning opportunities. And so they've been able to utilize uh, the equipment at our location in order to achieve that. We also have an individual uh, there that is helping to um, make sure that people are welcome and um, understand um, all of the services that they would be eligible to um, receive as uh, participants of the Hope and Prosperity Resource Center. One of the new programs that we've put up and we've talked a lot about on this program is the Rent Relief Program in partnership with Maine Housing, uh, the Community Development Block Grant of the um, of the Department of, of Economic and Community Development, as well as the governor's office. Uh, where are we at in rental assistance right now? We started a program, I know, in April, and this is the second uh, kind of program that we started out. And how, what, what are the details of that one and how are things going? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yes, we are uh, processing uh, many applications at this point. The uh, current program that we are operating is it actually administered through the main housing uh, organization. And uh, there, there's actually a link there where you can go to access an application. So the program does provide up to $1,000 a month for um, rent. And we uh, are working on getting those applications. One thing that we've discovered through the process is we are not able to process applications until all of the information is filled in. And so we've had a number of individuals who um, we, we perhaps need to reach back out to in order to collect all of the required information in order for us to process applications. So uh, as you are entering information into applications, we ask that you please complete all of the fields. If you're unsure, um, once you submit your application, if there is a piece of information missing, our staff are looking at that and they will reach out to you to collect any uh, outstanding or missing information. Uh, that's there. Uh, once we process your application, we work with your landlord and we actually will make the payments directly to your landlord. One program, Jamie, that's not necessarily uh, directly related with COVID-19, but obviously had uh, an impact in helping families uh, in the spring months when it was a little bit colder and now hopefully in the fall months as we uh, return to the heating season is the Home Energy Assistance Program. And I know that that program has already been very busy uh, starting up their season, but um, obviously uh, things are different for that program where we're not seeing people in person. Absolutely. So our staff have converted our in-person appointments to appointments via telephone. And so uh, many of the individuals who have received home energy assistance in the past they have received an, a letter with a date and time of their, of their appointment. And our staff will actually call you during that day and time to conduct your heating application interview. 
And uh, for those individuals who perhaps did not receive an application prior to um, this year, please reach out and we can get you onto the schedule for, um, for the coming heating season. Uh, one thing that we do want to uh, remind individuals is that because we're not meeting with you in person, we still do have to have all of the proof. Uh, so we need to have photocopies of uh, your, your information that needs to accompany your application. So we will be mailing out after your phone interview a packet of information and ask for you to sign your application and then send back photocopies. If you're unable to uh, obtain photocopies, you are able to work with our staff. We have um, a number of ways that we can get information. They can be brought to our office. They can be photo, uh, excuse me, uh, a picture can be taken and they can be emailed to our staff. So we have ways to, to work with you uh, if you're not able to obtain an actual photocopy. I think this is a good point to remind folks that there were some changes last season um, in terms of the income eligibility guidelines. Uh, and those have been tweaked slightly this year, again, in the favor of uh, customers throughout Arista County. So um, there are more people across the Rooster County who may qualify for the Home Energy Assistance Program. And if you checked just a few years ago, Jamie, would you encourage folks to, to look? I think the, the information um, may be on our website now and, and through Maine Housing. And, um, but we, we certainly want to help if you're eligible for the program and those guidelines have changed. Absolutely. We certainly encourage you, uh, even, if, even if over a year ago you were not eligible, you may likely be eligible now. And so please uh, look at the, check our website, look at Maine Housing's website. You can access that information to see if you may be eligible. Um, also, you can always call a navigator uh, and get connected to one of our navigators and they can help you to determine if um, you may be eligible for the heating assistance program as well. Another new thing that's happened um, during the time since COVID-19 really began to impact our community is a transition that was already planned for the Women, Infant, and Children, or WIC program, uh, related to how individuals can access uh, the products, the food, the healthy, nutritious food at the grocery store. Talk about EWIC. Yeah, so EWIC is a, a, a really great program. Uh, for those of you who may have been um, customers of WIC in the past, you may remember that there was a paper voucher system. Uh, now there is a, it's a card system and very similar to a SNAP benefit card. And so individuals who receive WIC services are able to um, utilize the electronic payment system as opposed to the voucher system, uh, the paper voucher system that we were utilizing before. So um, our staff are able to reload uh, the value of your voucher onto your card and you're able to utilize that um, during your shopping experience. Great. Two last things that we wanted to just have you briefly touch upon is our home buyer or home buyer education course, which has been very popular uh, throughout the, the time of the pandemic since we've moved it online uh, to a, a Zoom platform, um, as well as some partnerships that have developed in, in workforce development. So why don't we start with the HomeWorks Home Buyer Education Program? Been really popular, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. We've, we've seen um, an increase in the number of individuals that are interested in attending the home buyer education courses, and we've actually uh, increased the number of offerings that we've had as a result of that. And Greg Doak has, uh, has notified us that, that he has a, a huge number of requests each month. Um, we know that the interest rates are going down, and this is really... Um, a great time for individuals who may be interested in uh, looking at becoming a first time home buyer to learn about the process and all that uh, goes into being a homeowner and um, certainly uh, be eligible for the credit that uh, you're able to obtain towards your closing costs um, by participating in the course. And lastly, before you zoom off to another meeting, I want to uh, touch base with you on what seems to be a new uh, collaborative um, working together across Maine and as it relates to the workforce development system. Absolutely. So uh, this is a really exciting one because all of our workforce development boards do very similar work across the state. And so we are all 
providing different offerings and moving them to virtual platforms. And so um, during a, me a recent meeting, we, we were talking about how we could work together to offer statewide um, opportunities and uh, utilize our resources a little more um, effectively and efficiently. And so this is certainly one of the ways that we're able to do that in coming together to offer many training opportunities statewide. So it doesn't matter where you are in the state, you would be um, able to register for and participate in these, in these sessions. And so it may be an individual from ACAP presenting at one at one learning session and someone from, uh, you know, Eastern Maine Development Corporation at another. So uh, it's a really cool opportunity and, uh, and I'm excited to see how, how, this, uh, how this one moves us forward in that partnership. So obviously, uh, certainly no grass has grown under the feet of anyone at ACAP uh, throughout the time of the pandemic. Uh, Jamie Chandler, I want to thank you for joining us um, to discuss some of the internal operations and programming activity Again, you have another meeting to Zoom off to quite literally, so I will say goodbye to you and thank you very much. All right, thank you so much. And now we're going to transition to some of ACAP's community programming um, and how we are serving our community by reaching out to them and engaging with them. Um, and for that, uh, Sherry Law uh, joins me now. Sherry, thank you again for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. All right, so let's talk about the Yellow Tulip Project first. This is something new for Arista County, isn't it? It is. So this has been in the planning for about a year, Jason, and we're really excited that ACAP has been invited to be a part of it. And it really is uh, to bring awareness about uh, behavioral health services and mental health challenges in our community uh, to everyone. To kind of the, the motto of the Yellow Tulip Project is to smash the stigma, to, to make those in our community aware of, of the challenges that folks who have these uh, mental health challenges may be facing, but also to let uh, the community know if anyone needs help that there are services available and that it, there are um, there is a great you know safety net and programs able to to offer those supports that individuals may need. I think it also brings awareness um, to uh, you know change what we think of when we think of mental illness. It um, was all started with a teenage a young teenage girl and you know that is not the face that we typically think of. So it really is to kind of smash the stigma around this. So um, the last week, actually next week, uh, organizations throughout Arista County will be planting yellow tulips at their locations. ACAP will be planting tulips at nine locations. Um, and then we wait for spring when the tulips will bloom here in Arista County. And again, it shows solidarity and awareness for this issue. So it's, it's really great that we have been brought into this project and we're really excited. Um, to, to be part of it. We will be planting our tulips on October 1st, again, countywide at our different locations. And we will have a lot of our staff and our clients and some of the children at our centers and you know, be part of that, which is really great. And given our new emphasis um, in some of the behavioral health work um, in our early care and education centers and really growing that portfolio and our new partnership with the Northern Lighthouse, which we'll be talking with Blake Hat about in a moment, seems like a very timely um, opportunity for us to, uh, to call attention to this very important community issue. That's exactly right. And just showing support for those in our community. I, I think it's just showing that, um, you know, we are part of this community. We want to support health overall. And in this case, the mental health services that folks may need. Speaking of something that's timely, talk about the Community Coats Project as the temperatures drop. Yeah, so Community Coats, this is our second year of offering that project, which is, is very simple. We have a rack outside our office at 771 Main Street. We encourage individuals to drop off uh, coats that they no longer need or no longer fit them um, for others in our community. Last year, we had hundreds of coats come in and the equal number of coats go out. It, it truly is a community project uh, of folks giving what they can to help others um, in, in our community. So uh, on the screen, you'll see an image of what the coat rack looks like. It's very very simple but some of the things that I've seen I've seen individuals come up and literally take the coat off their back to leave it for someone else I've seen someone need a coat and, and leave a thinner you know spring or fall coat and take a warmer winter coat um, I've seen families come together to hang coats knowing that other children in the community you know will receive the items that they've outgrown so it really is a, a great great program especially on a, a morning like this where it's very chilly um, in addition to accepting coats on this rack, we do accept other winter items, winter boots, hats, gloves, even warm sweatshirts and sweaters. So um, it's something that, um, you know, a lot of us take for granted, but it, it really can help a, an individual or family in a, in a very impactful way. 
Now, Sherry, we've always known that there's been a need there, especially at the start of the school year, but it seems to extend beyond that, not just for coats, but for other clothing items. Uh, we obviously recently did the, the community clothing, uh, kids community clothing uh, closet in partnership with United Way and others um, that was held at the University Centre Mall over a three day period. But something else happened recently that allowed us to sort of extend that effort in a 24 hour, seven day a week operation. And talk about that and talk about what's come of it as a result. Absolutely. So it really has been a ripple effect. We did the, the kids closet and we had a community partner, the Maine Hope Center, hear about the work that we had done. Um, they had a lot of items that they were willing to donate, thousands of pieces of clothing they wanted to donate. So we got together and thought, how can we, how can we offer this? Um, we're very fortunate at our 771 uh, Main Street office that we have a, a portico, we have the a covering over our sidewalk. So we were able to set up racks, 10 racks full of clothing, thousands of pieces of clothing that were up for two weeks, 24 seven, like Jason mentioned, um, and individuals were invited to come in and take what they need. Um, the beauty of it was that we saw folks from from everywhere, all over Aroostook County come to this site, folks uh, taking clothing for themselves, their family, friends in their community, um, but others leaving items, hanging items on the rack to replace what was taken. It was thousands of items in just that short two week period, but it was the 24 seven was a big piece of that because you know if you're working nine to five, it's hard to get to an event. Um, or, you know, if, if you, you don't want to have to, you know, maybe in the past you've never been a recipient, but you've always been a donor instead. So it was very impactful to have those items out, leave them out over the weekend and to come back and to see the, the generosity of the community for the items that were given, but also to see the, the need. So that has continued. We actually had another community partner contact us last week um, in looking for a way to continue this year round. So we have partnered with the United Way of Aroostook uh, once again, and we will be having clothing available on an as needed basis um, in a secure location. Um, and we will be sharing those details soon. We're also working at our 771 Main Street to convert some um, a fixture that we have outside currently for our WIC clinic to possibly be a, a larger coat rack because the community coat rack is lovely and it does serve our purpose, but we, we know that um, we have more space. And so we're happy to hopefully convert that into a more of a closet, I guess is the word to say. So just being able to, to meet the changing needs in our community, look at the resources that are available. And if those resources are garbage bags of clothes, how can we best get those out into the community? So we've been able to kind of pivot. And again, because of the, the partnerships that we have and the great community support, we've been able to turn some of these, you know, what could have been great ideas into really fabulous events and to support the community. And the need for clothing is not the only need that we're trying to meet um, out in front of our 771 Main Street facility. Uh, the emergent need for food at a time when it's not convenient and there, aren't mo there isn't money uh, for a household to get other food uh, is something the community cupboard has served a purpose in and really grown throughout Aroostook County uh, with the very first one starting here at ACAP. And that, again, Jason, that does speak to it very well is that it's not always a nine to five need. It's not always something that we can fill during the workday. So the community cupboard has been great. And that has been a project that's been going on um, across Aroostook County for years. Um, we're looking at the next stage of that and what's next. So the community cupboard here in Presque Isle, we are going to be offering a sponsor of the month, uh, an individual or group, a partner that wants to make sure that this cupboard is full for the entire month. So in the month of October, it'll be our first sponsored month in the United Way of Aroostook has graciously stepped up to fill that need. Um, we're hoping that we can have one sponsor every month to make sure that there's food in there for individuals and families that need it throughout that entire month. So um, just another great partnership. I think it's important to note, Jason, that we're talking a lot about work that's happening at 771 Main Street here in Presque Isle. We are looking at ways to expand these services in other communities. Each location looks a little bit different. The needs in each community is a little bit different. So um, if you don't if you if you can visit us at the 771 Main Street address here in Prescott, that's great. If not, um, please let us know what community you're in and what needs you have, and we will work to fill those needs countywide. Great. Speaking of filling needs countywide, one of our great community partners in a new partnership with us, uh, the Northern Lighthouse, uh, Blake Hat joins us on the program now. And Sherry will ask you to stay on as well, because just want to reflect for a moment before we get into some of the things that Northern Lighthouse is working on right now and opportunities that they have, including employment for individuals. Uh, to talk a little bit about this new partnership, I think it's very exciting. And, and Blake, I think you and the folks, our friends at Northern Lighthouse, agree. Absolutely. This partnership um, 
is going to be amazing, not only for just each of our organizations, but as a whole for our community and who we're serving. Um, our goal, as, as is, I'm sure yours, is to really find new ways to meet the needs in the county, uh, because I think we're all noticing that um, not one entity can just do it all. It's going to take a community to really help uh, come around uh, each of our families, children, and adults that we serve to really support them and move forward. Both you, Blake, and Sherry were members of the, the team that included board members from both the Northern Lighthouse and from ACAP and, and the leader, the leadership. Both of you were part of the leadership teams from both organizations. Um, what are your thoughts, Sherry, about this, uh, this new partnership and what it will mean? Blake talked about uh, the importance, and I think we always put the individuals that we serve in the center of all of our, of our discussions. Absolutely. When we were going through this process of getting to know the Northern Lighthouse and the uh, programs that they could offer and how we could work together, it was abundantly clear that we really do share a lot of the same mission, a lot of the same uh, energy to serve our clients, and that we really complement the two agencies complement each other very well but at the end of the day the the conversation always went back to how can we best serve our community how can we best serve our individuals and their entire family um, and so we're I think we're going into this uh, together with that with that attitude and I think that is go it the partnership has been fantastic um, we've already done some really great things and we have some you know more work to do um, but it, it's been great we really love the team at Northern Lighthouse and I, I think uh, they the services really do complement each other very well and the clients that we have served together have really spoken to that so it's really really exciting and we couldn't be doing it with a better better team. Blake one of the areas that ACAP and we and Northern and the Northern Lighthouse work together on is working with individuals across the lifespan and uh, you have some availability uh, specifically for in the in, in programs dealing with children talk about uh, what the Northern Lighthouse has available to our community right now uh, for services related to children. So I think that I missed part of your for your question there uh, but I so basically as services related to children I mean obviously you know we're well known for our um, our services that we provide children and families, um, but you know we're, we are really focusing heavily on uh, the whole family approach. Um, and you know we we have our children's residential facility, as you'll see on the brochure listed right here. Uh, that is a that is a full and uh, encompassing program that you know we start with we service the children in our facility 24 7 but we're also working on our with our families and grand families. Um, to really support the children in their, in their growth and development and to help, uh, you know, get them home in, in a stable and safe and successful environment. Um, and oftentimes, you know, that also takes a case manager, um, which we provide a lot of those services because, you know, we need advocates in these homes and working with children and their families. Um, so what was the other part of your question, Jason? I'm sorry, I had to cut out there for a second. That's okay, Blake. I was really looking at what we're looking on the screen here in terms of the fact that you have pretty much no wait lists and immediate openings for both your residential home and your case management. Um, and I think that for, for parents who are dealing with a child that may be in crisis or having a difficult time, that's huge. Absolutely. Um, so, right, with case managers, you know, like I said before, just a minute ago, like they are advocates and they work in, in these children's homes and communities and accessing what these families need to support their children. Uh, and we currently have no wait lists. Um, our, our residential facility, for example, is a six bed facility. Uh, and we do have uh, some openings in that facility currently. Um, and that's, again, where the children come to live 24 seven uh, to get you know, round the clock support and care and to make the gains that they need to, to be, to live successfully with their family and in their community. So, um, you know, we offer a variety of programs that, you know, it is not just one program. It takes several programs that uh, come together, find resources. You know, oftentimes we have our case managers reaching out to uh, our friends at ACAP to support in home weatherization, heating assistance, you know, cause it takes, um, it takes a lot for a parent or a family to support their children. And it's hard to do that when um, they're struggling with food or they're struggling with clothing or they're struggling with weatherization and um, heating their home. When we're coming into the heating season, that's gonna be a stressor on a lot of families. Um, and I think that having uh, mentioned kind of circling back to our discussion about partnership, it's gonna be huge, a huge resource 
for our staff uh, who have already met uh, ACAP staff and getting to know the programs that you folks offer as well as other organizations in the community, but really taking a full worldly holistic approach to uh, meet those needs is, is, is amazing. And it's in the fact that we have those resources locally to do that um, has really excited our staff. And we, like, like Sherry mentioned, there's a lot of work still to be done and a lot of projects out there um, that are out there that we can now probably tackle together versus, you know, individually. Those things are a struggle for organizations to, um, to really tap into various resources. So we're really excited for this partnership and so is our staff. And uh, I like to echo exactly what Sherry just said. Our staff have... Um, come together, have a chance, had a chance to meet, and the fact that they are able to see that they share similar values, it just makes the work that we do uh, even more exciting and even more important. And that work, Blake, really since the pandemic hit, um, in, your, in the, on the last slide we had up on the screen, it said anywhere in Maine, and that's really true as your team has really become uh, much more engaged in telehealth. Yes, uh, our organization um, has, in our, our, my opinion, flourished. Uh, we've really expanded our approach. We've really expanded, expanded our reach. Uh, we are now, where we were uh, restricted to just working with people in Prescott Isle, out of our Prescott Isle office, our clinicians and our case managers have the ability to support individuals and families and adults as far as Southern Maine. Um, we can service individuals in the Allagash, uh, whereas before, you know, resources and staffing were limited where you couldn't send somebody to provide um, work in an office in, you know, in near, even near the Allagash to uh, provide therapy or case management services. Uh, now we are fully utilizing the televideo platform through Zoom or um, uh, VC and other, other various platforms that it's really giving us um, a leap forward to servicing families across the state. I mean, so we're before, you know, our, a lot of our logos and a lot of our, our mission were, was to help the families of Rooster County, but we're really starting to see that we're really expanding our reach to helping families across the state of Maine, children across the state of Maine, adults uh, and, and adults with disabilities across the state of Maine, uh, just due to televideo. And, you know, as all the negative impacts that COVID has had, um, on our society and individuals and families, I will say that one of the positive results is the fact that organizations like ours have learned and adapted to providing supports across their communities. And their communities have gone from 25, you know, a 25 mile radius to their entire state. Um, and there are a lot of families in, in need in rural places that doesn't matter if they're three or four hours south of us, they're just as rural as we are, if not more rural, and they have even more limited access to services and sports. Oh, Blake, there's so many things that we could talk about with Northern Lighthouse, and we'll certainly have you back on, and, and Tiffany as well, and others from your organization. But one of the last the things that we wanted to leave folks with was that um, there's a lot of exciting things happening at Northern Lighthouse, and you're also looking for new people to join your team. Absolutely. Uh, we have joined forces with ACAP's workforce development team, and we will be hosting uh, weekly job fairs. Uh, and our first one is coming up this Wednesday from 10 to 12 at our Prescott location. Uh, we'll be posting all the information on our website, our Facebook page, and we will also be sharing the information with our partners at ACAP to be disseminated through your um, listservs as well. Um, you know, we have, we will be doing interviews uh, in person. We will be conducting interviews by televideo for those folks who need that. So if it's something that uh, you're interested in or you would like more information on, you can drop by. We, like it says, he listed here, we will be doing interviews on site. But if something prevents you from showing up, give us a call at our HR office um, and we will definitely be more than happy to set something up with you televideo and, uh, or schedule something for a later date if need be. So we are excited to see our team grow and we are very, very thankful for the support that the team at ACAP has provided to us in really building and growing our team. Really, Blake, what I think we found, because we had our, the, the management groups of both of our organizations together just a couple of Fridays ago, and I think that what we found um, was that our people that work for both of our organizations are very passionate about what they do and have probably the biggest hearts of any, um, of any work employee base uh, in Aroostook County in terms of the passion and compassion for the work that they do. 
Absolutely. It was exciting to see uh, our, the both teams kind of get together, uh, mix, and, you know, the laughter and the camaraderie that was shared around that uh, that group of members from both of our organizations was exciting. And, and to see that it wasn't a group of, it wasn't a room full of strangers. It was a room full of people with common values and uh, strengths. And just to see them creating ideas, even amongst themselves, uh, and so we're really excited to see what we can really put the, pull together with this partnership. Great, and I'm sure we'll talk more about it in a future edition of ACAP today. And that's all the time that we have for now. But before we leave you, I want to say thank you to uh, Jamie Chandler, to Sherry Locke, and to Blake Hatt, our friend from the Northern Lighthouse, for joining us on today's edition of ACAP today. Uh, as we do at every point in this program, and I encourage you to do the same um, for uh, the Northern Lighthouse if you're in need of these services, but do reach out to us. Our phone number here at ACAP is 764-3721 or ACAP dash info at acap dash me dot org. If you didn't catch the information on the contact for Northern Lighthouse earlier in the broadcast, certainly give us a call and we'd be happy to uh, give you that information and get that information to you. You can reach us um, as you can reach Northern Lighthouse on Facebook, on our respective websites, and certainly tune into the ACAP YouTube channel to see past episodes of ACAP today and other uh, worthwhile things for your viewing and for your children's viewing as there are some great early care and education lessons and story times on there as well. And lastly, as we do each week um, on ACAP today, we leave you with our snapshot of the week. This is a new playground that is currently being installed at the Caribou Early Care and Education Center. Some beautiful new equipment there that I'm sure our children in our uh, child care, um, preschool, early Head Start and Head Start programs will certainly enjoy at the Caribou Center um, on a sunny day like today. I just bundle up a little bit um, and a great time on the slides uh, there at the Caribou Early Care and Education Center. On behalf of our staff at the Caribou Early Care and Education Center and throughout uh, Aroostook County at the uh, Aroostook County Action Program and also for our team member friends at the Northern Lighthouse, thank you for joining us this week on ACAP Today. We'll see you next week for another edition. Have a great week, everyone.